Hey YouTube, I'm back. Just wanted to pop on here and say I am not down in the dumps. No, I'm not. In fact, I'm feeling better today than I have since I got hurt. I'm doing much better. I'm on the mend. The leg is doing very well. It's healing very fast. And uh, I wasn't being negative in my last video. If it sounded that way, then I'll blame it on the ibuprofen. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I wasn't being negative. Yes, I brought up two people that need some help. And I'm hoping that you guys took the time to click the links and check in on those people. If nothing else, to give them a hopeful word. You know, let them know that, that you're sending uh, prayers their way or, or good thoughts. Love. You know, they definitely need love. And that was the whole purpose behind the video. It wasn't to be negative. We, uh, I think we've just been so bombarded by negative and not coming across answers. I don't know if we expect somebody to bring up a magician's hat and reach in and pull the answers out and just throw them up for us to see like the big bouquet of flowers or the rabbit. It's not going to happen that way. The answers are with us. We have the answers. We have the answers to all these problems. They're not even really problems if you look at it realistically. The earth has always gone through changes. Greenhouse effect, come on people. The earth has gone through these changes many, many times. You know where the ice is melting off in Antarctica, I believe it's Antarctica, they have actually found pyramids below the ice. Now think about that. Think about that. Mother Earth has gone through these changes before. And man has survived these changes. So should we be concerned about that? Never. Never. Everybody goes through changes. In fact, the human body, I read one time, goes through a chemical change every seven years. That's interesting. Everything changes. Everything. You, me, the news. The thing is, we have been led to uh, a point in our lives where we look at negativity in a fearful way. For whatever reason, people become afraid. We don't have anything to be afraid of. Nothing at all, except fear itself. And the reason I say that is when we are filled with fear, we're not productive. We're not productive. It shuts off some of the best thinking mechanisms of our brain. We have powers beyond our comprehension. And they're powers that we used to use. We really did. The thing is, over the years, uh, we have forgotten how to use them. I, I call it, uh, with the children, lazy thinking. Because we get accustomed to looking for that magician's hat and the answer that will be pulled out. The answer is right here. I'm going to tell you a little story. And it's a true story. Actually happened in 1972. There is a hill in Ogden, Utah called Jackson's Hill. Jackson Hill. It takes you up from the bottom up into Jackson Street to be on the top of the hill. And it's quite a, quite a hill. I was riding with another person. She was driving. I was in the passenger seat. And my little baby was laying in the seat between us. That was before the seat belt thing and before the baby car seats. Friends, it's when we were free. 
Anyway, my little baby was laying between us, and he had gone to sleep. She started up the hill, and when she just got to the crest of the hill, the car died. It was an old 1963, I think, Chrysler or something, I don't know. But uh, it had power steering and power brake. And when it died, of course, there are no power brakes or power steering. She tried to put it into park. And I don't know what happened, but the car started rolling backwards. Now, when you're going down a hill backwards, it's quite a ride. The car was fishtailing back and forth like this going down as she was trying to manually. No, it's not even manual steering. When you lose power steering, it's beyond manual steering. It's really hard to move. Anyway, she was trying to gain control of the car. And I was thinking, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. And then I thought, oh, if we wreck, please protect my baby. Please protect my baby. As the car is fishtailing down this hill, I happened to turn and I looked and I saw a bush. And I thought, let my baby land on a bush. Let my baby land on a bush. And I pictured my baby landing on the bush. The car went like this and backed right into the hillside. Now, Jackson Hill has a big drop-off on one side and, of course, a big mountainous hill on the other side. So you come down the hill, the road is like this, and then it's a big drop-off. And that's what she was fishtailing against was the drop-off on one side and the big hill on the other. Well, the back end of the car skidded and went right into the hillside, buried, buried the trunk clear up to the back window of that car. And I'll, I'll tell you something. The car was shaped like this. Can you guys see that? The back end, when it hit the mountain popped up and the dirt fell on it and the car was shaped like that then. And uh, I was hysterical. I found out that when bad things like that happen, I can't quit laughing. I go into total hysteria. Anyway, my baby had flown out of the car and landed on the bush. Honest to God, true story. He had landed on the bush. A very soft, nice, fluffy bush. And he was giggling. I was laughing. She was crying, screaming, crying, insane fear. I felt no fear. I picked up my baby. I sat down on the ground, and we waited. Somebody went up the hill and called the police and a tow truck, whatever, and they came to the site. They saw what had happened, and they escorted us up the hill, down to 25th Street, to my home. My baby was safe, and so was I. Now, to this day, when I think back, to that accident, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I willed with my own mind the safety net for my child. I believe that as sure as I believe that I'm sitting here in front of you right now. We have power. We have power. And I'm sure if any one of you stopped and took time to reflect on where you've been, the things that you've seen, the, the things that have taken place in your life, you too will find a moment when your mind had full control of a situation. We have that power. I cannot stress it enough. 
We've got the power to change things. The first thing we need to change is what we're watching, what we're seeing, what we're listening to. If we are being so bombarded with negative, nasty news, all we're going to see is negative, nasty news. It's just a fact. We have pollu polluted our own world with problems. It's time for us to change those problems. Now, a lot of you are going to be scoffing at this, and you're going to say, that is not true. That can't be. But let me tell you this. And for you Christians, pay close attention to what I'm saying. We were created in God's image. And in fact, if you go to your Bible and you read in Genesis where God is creating the, the world, he says quite clearly, create them in our image. That's a plural statement. Create them in our image. We were created by an energy that can do anything, including create. We speak things into existence. We think things into existence. Now, friends, what I'm telling you is absolute, honest truth. We have got to start speaking answers to problems. We need to share ideas that are wholesome and healthy and full of positive energy. When I speak this, you should feel it. Close your eyes and feel what I'm saying. My energy goes to you. From you, it will go elsewhere. It reaches out beyond the universe. Any good energy does, as does the bad energy. We are capable of so much more than we realize. We used these energies before. They are part of the human body. Our DNA was broken. It was altered. It is now going back to whole. It is becoming whole again. There is a reason that we only use a portion of our brain when we've got a whole brain. Haven't you ever asked yourself why that is? It has to be turned on. Just like you turn your car on. It has to be turned on. And in order to do that, you have to start accepting the positive energy that rebuilds and makes things whole and brings light into your being. It's very real. It's very real. We are capable of great things. We can fix this world. We can fix each other. It starts in your home. Fix your home. Bring light into your home. Bring laughter into the children. Family time at the dinner table. Work together to make the meal. Serve it at the table. Sit with your children around the table. Enjoy that moment. Watch the energy. The children will light right up. The wife will light right up. The husband. The family. Whoever is at that table will light up. Bring positive into your home. Speak good things. Speak great things. Talk about the wonders of the world. The greatness, the beauty. 
you know, even looking up at these chemtrails, we can look up and we can go, oh, I was going to, you know, and, and complain about them. Or we can think them away. We can see the beauty. Look at the beautiful colors. The birds aren't afraid. They fly all over the sky. They're not afraid. What do they know that we don't know? We can make good of this. We can think a clear sky. We can put a stop to the pollution. Except the change that Mother Earth is going through, the pole shift, the melting of the ice and the building of the ice. Isn't that funny? One place melts, the other place builds. Mother Earth knows what she's doing. She's done it before. Everything's going to be fine. As long as you begin to believe that. You have to believe what I'm telling you. You do. And for those of you that find it hard to believe, or you're just animately saying it's not so, don't listen to me now. But hear my words later. Look around. Pay attention. See what you can do. See what wonders you can make happen. My child did land in the bush, just like I had willed it to happen. No, it's not magic. It's the power of the mind. Especially when it is bonded with love. There is no power greater than the bond between love and mind. You put those together and there is no stronger force. Be the answer. You are the answer. That's why I love all of you so much. I feel your energies. I feel your pain. I feel your fear. I do. Fear is a poison. It's the wall that will prevent this. The fear will prevent love and mind bonding for the power that we're capable of. We are unique beings. We have the power. We have the power. We just have to learn how to use it. Don't speak ill of other people, not even those that are doing bad towards us. Wish them light. Wish light on them. Make it happen. Picture them sitting on the throne in their house and make them think positive thoughts. Make them think love thoughts. Love for all mankind. Love for the world. Why on the throne? Why in the bathroom? Why on the toilet? Because that's when they're most vulnerable. Make it happen. We can do that. We have that power. And especially in numbers. If we can just get it together, the more of us that think this way, the stronger the power is going to be. It will be. Watch. Watch. It will be. Much love to all of you. Much love to all of you. History does repeat itself. Let's just make sure that it is the Garden of Eden, that it's the good, the wholesome, the beautiful, the love for one another, the unity. That's what we need to repeat. And we need to get back to being whole. We need our whole DNA functioning, our whole brain. Let's get it going. I love you all. Great big hugs. And I'll catch you guys later. And I feel good.
I hope you do too.